One monitor's off, but that's okay. I can, uh, I see that I'm on. And uh, good afternoon. It is the 29th of April. Can you believe it? It is the 29th of April. And, uh, geez, this week is just flying by. It's already Wednesday, right? It is Wednesday, <laughs> I think. And uh, so, good afternoon and, and welcome. My name is Dean Mazzarella, Mayor for the City of Lemonster. And uh, well, I'll be with you for probably the next 20 to 40 minutes. Um, let's see where we start. We've got the numbers in already. Um, Carl, is there any way to turn this monitor on just so I can see which camera is happening here? Please. Thank you. Well, it's okay. Not a biggie. See that? Love these little pink flamingo masks. What do you think of that, huh? Kind of funky. You know what's weird, though? Nothing stays on my ears. Am I the only one that has that problem? Yeah, so I'm just going to staple it here and staple it here, I guess. Any questions? Uh, just post them right here on Facebook, 978 534 7500, extension 5055 is the phone number at emergency management. The calls are, um, well, they're slowing down, so we're going to readjust the hours. Uh, it has been open from 8 to 8 daily, so we're going to adjust the hours a little bit, but for now, uh, feel free to call them at 978-534-7500, extension 5055. Let's turn those down. So, we have numbers already if you want to um, get them. So, we are at 103 today. Not sure what happened, but we were dropping down every day, but there's more testing. You've got to be prepared for that because that is what's going to find the most amount, get them into um, treatment and uh, identify them. So we're at like 88, and then it went down to 85, and then to 83, and for some reason today it's up to 103, And uh, but the good part is that the uh, those coming off are still climbing to 90 today, so that's good. So that gives us... Um, that gives us that cushion. Again, we want to see those numbers um, pretty equal and then begin to drop down. So that's where we're at. We're going to get the up and down effect no matter what. And, um, but, we, you know, for it to go up uh, from 83 to 103, but we don't want it to, go, you know, we don't want to see those drastic increases. So that's where we're at today. Uh, we don't have the numbers as of uh, 4 o'clock, but if they come in, Wendy will text them to me. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll have those um, standing by. So we'll bring those back to you when we, we get them. State assistance to apply for our unemployment benefits, mass.gov forward slash DOA to apply for self-employed contractor employment benefits, mass.gov forward slash PUA. So DOA for unemployment, PUA for small business self-employed, the Paycheck Protection Program, SBA.gov, Small Business Loan and Grant Program, and um, we will decline on that. Sorry about that. Sexual Assault, Domestic Violence Number, 877-785-2020. Family Health Line for Nursing Home Patients, 617-660-5399. And remember, all of these slides are on our website at lemmis-ma.gov. So if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and post them here on Facebook, or you can call here at 978-53777-60, extension 3. They will um, take the question off air if you like, or you can come on air. It's totally up to you. Uh, but anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, give blood, 1-800-RED-CROSS, or you can go to redcross.org, back uh, forward slash ma Massachusetts. Uh, they do need blood. I know there have been people giving at the very beginning, and you know how that goes. At the beginning, everyone wants to give, and then later on, it sort of teeters down, but they still need blood. So call to schedule an appointment. They are, uh, you will have to get to Worcester. They do not have a local uh, area where they are taking blood. So 1-800-RED-CROSS. Um, um, resources for kids, always 24-7. Kids shouldn't be up at 2 in the morning, but... LumisterLibrary.org is open 24-7. And if you'd like free Wi-Fi, L-E-O-L-I-B, guest. Um, bear hunt, still people driving around looking for bears. 
You can get a list of those on our Facebook page, Lemonster Community uh, page, Facebook. United Way, Stand United COVID-19 Response Fund. They have been uh, allocating money to Mark. Got off the phone with Trish today from Mark. Sort of getting an update as to the families that have been helped in Lemonster. It sounds like quite a few have been um, helped by that fund. Let's go to some slides. Let me just catch up on our slides here. There's some state we did. Mr. County cases. Um, there's our up and down sort of zigzag. We get some real, you know, start off in March, not so bad, and then we get a spike, then it comes back down. And then around the beginning of April, we take this real serious. We have a couple lulls. And again, a lot of it is based on um, testing. Let me just go back, if you guys don't mind. There's yesterday's numbers um, as uh, Monday and Tuesday's numbers. So you can see it's gone up. I think this afternoon when we get those numbers, and if we don't get them uh, while I'm here, I will post them later. But I, I, I think you're going to see a day that um, there is a lot of testing, that it's, it's gone up substantially. So yesterday was uh, 90, let's see, total tested mass, um, 254, but total cases in Massachusetts are at 58,000. And then, of course, total tested, and it's been going up about 10,000 a day. I wouldn't doubt it if it's gone up way above that. They're just more testing sites. And again, waiting for that number from the state, Department of Public Health, in terms of out of those tested, we know that the hospitalization rate is 7%. How many are asymptomatic, right? How many do not have symptoms? That would tell us a lot, right? That would tell us a, a different part of the story here. Total deaths in Massachusetts as of yesterday, 150 increase to over 3,153. But they are bringing in more uh, claims. They're taking more claims, about 150,000 unemployment claims. <clears throat> uh, $500 million in uh, funding that'll go out. And PUA call center in line have been uh, done 200,000 issues with individuals, 400 regular unemployment claims being paid. And uh, they've also extended, if you didn't hear, They've extended the uh, closures of non-essential businesses and his stay at home advisory for residents May 18th, until May 18th, including the no meeting in groups of more than 10. So here's the dilemma the governor has. <clears throat> if you watch the press conferences, the pressure to open, uh, at least begin to open um, certain things, not everything, but certain things is mounting and, uh, and it's going to continue to mount. And so one needs to think what let me just go back a couple slides if I can guys let's let's go back here let's go no I guess that slide's gone the zigzag slide let's see if we can find it there you go so it, 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 there is so we're looking at the 25th there Let, let's just fast forward to 29th let's assume it's gone down somewhat and it looks like it's gone down sort of drastically but this is not going to go. As you see, we, we were dropping from 89 cases to 85, to 84, to 83, and then up to 109. This is not going to, these numbers are not going to just sort of fall off the side, you know, just all of a sudden just drop drastically. So the dilemma is uh, more pressure to open some things. I don't think anybody wants to see the governor open everything, but some things. And, um, it, you know, it's May 1st. We're going to be into two and a half weeks, I guess. Yeah, two and a half weeks, maybe a little more, maybe three. And I don't see things changing that drastically in three weeks. So let's say two weeks out, two and a half weeks out, he needs to make another decision. Um, are they going to, again, stick to the, uh, no, we're not just going to, we're not going to open things. I, I doubt that's going to, that is going to backfire at some point. I think people at this point feel they're doing, or most are doing everything they possibly can. And, um, and, and I'm not saying we're just going to open everything, but what, uh, what may happen is uh, they begin to start to open some things. Um, to, and, and so I think that even prior to the 18th, you will see some things. They'll start to adding to those lists of essential workers or essential businesses that can open. And you can see... Uh, certain, and, and I think the reason is because 
There are a number of businesses that have very few walk-in retail, have very little walk-in, and, uh, and offices that have very little walk-in. And they've been closed, and now it's week seven. We're going to be kicking into eight, week eight and nine, and we'll be 10 weeks out. I, I just don't see it. And uh, so I think what, what's going to happen is what even, you know, sort of what we've been doing is getting ready for whatever. So we have a, an option A, B, and a C. And if um, the state opens up, we're ready for that. But we're, we're, we're taking the uh, baby step approach here in the city of Leominster. So that's the approach we're taking. There's some uh, daily and cumulative cases as of uh, yesterday, again, we don't have the update. Well, we will be getting them though. And again, if we keep, we don't have them, we'll either share them with you tomorrow morning at nine, or um, tonight sometime. Testing by date, you can see the up and down sort of plateaus off. But you know, really around the 23rd is when we see it really go up. And then we've had some situations where it's gone down, but um, it, it's it's going to go up, and it's and it's going to level off. But it's going to take a while to do that, and so. I think if the plan is to wait until we see all of these numbers um, sort of start to go down in 14 consecutive days at the same time that there's more testing out there, um, I don't know. I'm just putting in my two cents. I can feel everywhere I go. People have, you know, are all day saying, I'm complying. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do, everything. I'm staying away from people. And um, I'm not able to conduct business. I'm not able to get to work. Businesses are saying they're running out of money. Some qualified for assistance. Some didn't. And, uh, and, and it will probably get down to, to the level of um, who has the funding and who doesn't, who can stay open, who can't. And so uh, it's going to be a rough, rough road for the couple week, next couple weeks. But continue on, because uh, we're doing well here in the city. We are at the bottom of any city or town. In the whole entire state, we're like the bottom of the bottom three or four it fluctuates, but basically we are pretty much at the bottom, and that is uh, at the at, and that is because people have been paying attention, and we're keeping those numbers down. You may get a fluctuation of five up, ten down, ten up, but the reality is we're, we're getting more and more of those cases off. Uh, there's your county levels. This map's quick and easy to understand. The dock is where they're really having problems. It gets a little lighter, that sort of lemons the blue there in the middle, that's Worcester County. And then the light, sort of powder blue, light, light blue, Bonstable, Ham Hamden, Berkshire, and Franklin County with almost no cases at all. And again, the pressure from, you know, to the governor in those counties are, are going to mount. Um, it's over 3,000, so we're probably over 4,000 of those that are currently hospitalized. So we'd be watching those numbers because it is those numbers when we get that percentage of those hospitalized, you know, and that number drops and the average number of hospitalized drops, then that tells us that we've sort of reached the, the surge and we're beginning to sort of slow down. However, uh, testing more and more will get those that are positive, that are asymptomatic, and we can certainly get those, um, we can certainly... Um, treat those, and even if they don't have symptoms, we can certainly keep an eye on them and trace them, right? Remember the whole thing? So in Lemus, we have 14 cases that'll be going to uh, seek uh, testing, uh, further testing, so they'll be traced. So the state will call everyone that they've come in contact with and, and try to see if they're having symptoms and decide whether or not they should be testing. And that's really the way. So we're not just on one level at a time of testing. It's really one person could have been in contact with uh, 10 or 15, and they're going back and doing tracing and tracking and having them tasted as well. Yes, I'll give those numbers in a, in a couple of minutes. We're at 103 active. Thank you. Somebody else just posted 103 active and then 90 are uh, off quarantine, meaning that they've got been seven days or more with no uh, symptoms. There's our uh, update as of yesterday for daily and cumulative deaths. Uh, again, 3,153 uh, confirmed cases, uh, deaths here uh, in the state of Massachusetts. There's uh, by age, which uh, again, these are confirmed cases, and there is no question that young people are getting it. There, there they are. There's, there's the numbers, right? In fact, that group 50 to 59, contracting it more than those that are 80, but the average age, 54 
years old, and then we kick into hospitalizations by age group and then by per 100,000. And it's very low for those who are zero to, um, I guess, 49, 50, you know, it, it, even into the 50s, and then it kicks in at 70 plus to an average, excuse me, of 69. There's our average age of deaths, almost, almost no one from that age group all the way up to 50, and then at, uh, at 117 at, at 60 to 69, and then it jumps up significantly um, to those 70 to 79, and then from 80, it just goes up, and then the average age is 82. And if you look at the age groups per 100,000 on the right, it barely shows up until you hit that 70 to 79. So. Um, age uh, demographics, deaths by age and deaths by hundred per hundred thousand, uh, pretty much line up. There's your deaths by county. There's st clearly a, 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 an issue with those real densely populated areas. And uh, <coughs> you want to see the ages again? <coughs> um, that's the hospitalization. So when you see the case by case rate by age, it's you know, it's pretty much everyone's getting it, right, all ages. And then if you go to per 100,000, it drops down pretty consistent, except for the real, you know, up to 20 years old. But after 20, you know, people are getting it, 605 and 9 and 1,000, consistent, until you hit that um, age group that's 80 and over, and that's pretty significant. I'll show you that once again. This is the hospitalization rate. <clears throat> and to the left is basically by age, and then on the right is... By hundred per hundred thousand uh, population, and those are hospitalized. So the average age is 62. And then once again, if you're just joining us, um, you can see that deaths by um, by um, by age group on the left, pretty insignificant. Not that even one is too many, but uh, even you know it, it doesn't really show up until you hit that 70 plus, but really spikes off at 80 years old, and you can see the average age of 82 years old. That's by county, uh, pretty much male, female. Um, that's by sex, previous hospitalization, and underlying conditions. So those deaths with previous hospitalization, they were there in the hospital for something else medically or maybe in a nursing home at 60%. I'm rounding it off. Deaths with underlying conditions at 98%. So that really spikes up there, right? people that have had underlying conditions. Now that could be vague and there's all that sort of little lettering underneath there, that small lettering that, um, but it pretty much sums up what's happening here in the state of Massachusetts. And then obviously when you get to uh, race, ethnicity, um, clearly an issue there. Uh, at, at total case count at 58% if you go by race and ethnicity. And cases reported as hospitalized, again, still up there. And then if you get to the total deaths, uh, again, cumulative 50% of the 3,153. So half are deaths by uh, race and ethnicity, and 56% of uh, those uh, passing away are elderly, right? So that's, a, that's a, a big number. It's actually a little higher than that. Um, cases in long-term care facilities. Residents in healthcare uh, uh, workers of long-term uh, term care facilities, 11,000 long-term care facilities reporting at least one case, 310, and then deaths reported in long-term care facilities. So that's about half of the amount of deaths there are in the state are coming from uh, long-term care facilities. These are certainly numbers that uh, everyone will be looking at at the end of all this, but in the meantime, uh, extra assistance and funding and resources have been provided to those uh, areas of high vulnerability. There's our distribution of uh, PPEs in Worcester County in terms of getting the proper supplies. You can see every day in every single category, uh, nursing homes and senior living is up at the top now, uh, hospitals rank second, ventilators obviously for hospitals at 79 in Worcester County, and as I understand it, uh, uh, UMass Medical has um, seen a surge. They have not seen uh, cases of, of uh, those on ventilators or in serious condition going down. So that's why I say this is, 
you know, as much as everyone says this is over and wave the white flag and we're just going to extend this to the 18th, if we continue to see these kinds of numbers, even if they drop a couple of percent, two or three percent per day, um, I don't know. It's, it's uh, baby steps, baby steps all the way. Uh, let's see. What do you say? So state numbers are above. Let's see what they say. This is today. So the state numbers are um, cases, 60,000, 60,300. It's gone up 1,963 cases. Uh, Worcester City or Worcester County, uh, 5,300. It's gone up 301. Is my slide. So that has gone up about 50 or 60. See what I'm saying? It's more testing, more results, more tests positive. Tests, tests now in the state of Massachusetts gone up. See what I said? Almost 11,100. So it's gone up um, a couple hundred. So more testing every day, more and more testing. Deaths are up 252. Uh, deaths were up 150 yesterday. This is not going away for those more urban uh, communities, those densely populated areas, it is not uh, turning around. And so we are probably going to end up in that situation where we're, we're going to be asked, um, let's see, let me just look at this here. It's just coming in, so apologize. So hospitalization rates changes. Last Tuesday were at 9%, Saturday they were at 8%, and Sunday through today they remain at 7%. But deaths, have gone up 252. Yesterday, we've gone up 150. So that is significant. And we'll look at the updated charts as they come in. But more than likely, those are coming from the same places. Those are coming from the larger cities, the more densely populated areas. And uh, again, we've been watching those areas where there's a complete lockdown, shutdown, shelter in place. They don't even let you go out without a mask. They do not let you go out for anything. And whether or not that is having any kind of um, effect on things. So, um, in those areas, we're we're they're in it for a lot longer. I think uh, you know. How do you expect people go back to work? Go into a. Uh, uh, I, I know some of the buildings that I do business in in Boston that I go to for meetings. They have very small um, lobbies, uh, elevators. Some of these buildings are 15, 20, 30 stories. They have uh, elevators, which you know you get in an elevator. So. Is it going to change to mean that you get in the elevator and it, it, it will stop after so many people are in? I know for one, I'm not going to want to get into one of those elevators if there's more than two or three people in it. So I'll hoof it and take the stairs as much as I possibly can. Um, but those are the sorts of circumstances that uh, people are going to be running into. What about restaurants that pay high rent in those uh, in that Boston metropolitan area? How do they um, how do they? Um, sort of downsize the table arrangements and uh, stay alive in their in their businesses. So, um, I as much as we've pushed this off to the 18th, um, it's it's uh, it's troubling to see some of these numbers here. And uh, you know we're okay here, and our numbers haven't gone drastically up. Uh, they stay pretty consistent within a couple of percentage. But uh, this really is. is and I'm going to go back. If you just joined us, I'm just going to show you this this hasn't changed at all. If you don't mind me going back a couple slides, this tells the story right here. This is where the problem is. If you could put that up on a bigger slide, there you go. This is where the problem is. These are, um, these, this is the dashboard for confirmed cases per 100,000. And so we're looking at uh, population, right? And if you look at Essex, Middlesex, Norfolk, uh, Suffolk County, this is where most of the people live. Plymouth, I'm a little confused by, um, but uh, it could be because there's a soldier's home or they might have had a situations where they have nursing homes there. I don't know the exact extent because I know there have been a number of nursing homes that have had high rates of uh, um, confirmed, but per 100,000 people. This is where most of the people live. Then you get to Worcester County, it's better. And then you get into uh, the western part of the state. So these numbers haven't changed. And while I haven't seen the breakdown of where the deaths are coming from and which county they are, but I, I guarantee you this is consistent. So um, the governor and the lieutenant governor have some challenges. And these numbers are not drastically dropping in any category um, yet. So um, 
to think that, you know, on the 18th. And so there will definitely be no, and this is my point, there will definitely be no switch, no quick switch that anybody's going to hit to say, okay, it's, it's all clear. We go back. This is going to be baby steps, little, tiny baby steps until um, we, people are comfortable. And it could be that test results com are coming in lower and lower, but that doesn't mean people's perception or they don't feel that way and they don't feel safe to go out, whatever it might be, they have pre-existing conditions. Um, so I, 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 I don't know if the governor would, you know, move towards, um, you know, going towards something that's consistent with opening by counties. We're not in those uh, parts of the country where we have, um, where we, we might be able to do that because there's, you know, this isn't some of those counties in Florida or wherever other parts of the country where they, they have huge, it takes hours to get from one county to another. This is uh, Massachusetts where it takes hours to go from one section to the other. Anyway, testing still going on. Um, I thought I saw the slide this morning that said, oh, about averaging about 60 tests a day at Health Alliance. Um, eight to four o'clock, Monday to Friday, uh, 10 to two on weekends and uh, symptoms. You should have symptoms. You don't need a doctor's note. Uh, CDC has, um, let's see, can you repeat what you were saying about your opinion about opening up businesses? I missed a bit. So what I'm saying is, this is, uh, uh, if what they're going to have to do, it, our city's ready. We're ready for, to, to open. Uh, what we're going to wait for is the state, right, to, to sort of look at all these numbers and say it's safe to start opening. What I'm saying is there will be no light switch where, I don't care if it's May 18th, May 24th, May 30th, there is no switch. These numbers don't indicate that there's going to be, um, that, that things are going to change, but not that fast where we're going to hit a switch and everything's going to go back to normal. Not the case. And what I've said, Marissa, is it, this is going to be baby steps. This is opening certain kinds of businesses gradually. Uh, I think the masks are going to be with us. I think social distancing um, where it's going to probably be part of our life for a long time, uh, just all of those things. So um, in terms of businesses, shields, I guess, you know, certain restrictions saying if you have shields and you're cutting somebody's hair, then maybe a shield and maybe a mask on the person that you're cutting their hair, the customer. Um, th th that's the kind of guidelines they're going to have to um, come up with, but I don't see... Uh, them keeping everything shut down till the 18th, and then from the 18th say that we're going to now um, we're going to now uh, extend it another two weeks. You can already see during the press conference if you listen to the nature of the questions by the press, it is it is turned from. We all know we're, we're we all know what we're supposed to do: social distancing, wash our hands, act as if we all have the virus, act as everybody we come in contact with, with has it. If you're sick, stay home. If you're elderly, shelter in place. Oh, we, we already know that every one of us. We've just got to get everybody to practice it. But um, but how do you then begin to open businesses? And what I've been saying is it's going to have to be baby steps. And I suggest that probably the governor would start thinking about. Uh, you know, downtown, there are offices with three to five people, where the, each person has their office. There's no elevator. They walk up the stairs, or maybe there's an elevator, and they are not classified as an essential business right now. Um, the governor could, uh, could, could open those kinds of businesses. Um, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm certain that they're afraid of a free-for-all, that suddenly people are going to start to think that it's okay to just go back to normal and everybody opens. I, I don't see that coming either. So I hope, I hope I'm not confusing you. What I'm saying is this isn't going to clear itself up for the 18th. It's not. As, as optimistic as I am, um, I just don't see it happening. Um, and so what I do see happening is just opening with baby steps. I can't stress that part enough. So uh, businesses should get, get ready and uh, have a number of different options ready. But if I was uh, cutting hair or I was some, doing something that was close to people, I'd be looking for a shield. I know it sounds silly, but those face shields, and I'd be getting my hands on some of those uh, mask in case the customer, I wouldn't take a customer that didn't come in with a, uh, a mask. And so that's pretty much my prediction here based on what I've seen and what I know. And so, yeah, we're, we're, we're okay here in uh, Worcester County. Obviously, Worcester's 
still in the middle of the surge, but when you reach out past those other communities <clears throat> and you get to North Worcester County and you get into Ashby with seven and 12 in Ashpenham, uh, you add up all these communities in, in Worcester County and they don't add up to the number that Worcester has at 2,000. Even though if you add up all those populations, they're, they're actually bigger than Worcester. Uh, it is really an urban, you know, a densely populated urban problem. It's a big problem everywhere, but they have their sort of issues. They have their problems. They have their challenges to, to um, imagine telling people it's time to hit the subway. Uh, people that uh, don't have an automobile, everybody in Boston will have a bicycle because uh, people are living in apartments that are very expensive. They gave up their automobile. They move around the city either walking or using public transportation. I don't see people, I don't care how much you tell people, they're going to sanitize it, put a bunch of people on a subway again. And, and so that's where I think a lot of uh, sort of phasing in. If people can work from home, they'll work from home in the big cities and they'll just slowly, gradually do this. But if, if, if I was going to get into a business, I'd be getting into the inexpensive bicycle business. <clears throat> inexpensive meaning under $500. So listen, you don't have to take any of this, take it in a grain of salt from me. This is just based on looking at the numbers. Um, Gardner with 74, Harvard with 13, uh, Holland with five. The more dense, the more um, the more urb, uh, the, the more suburban you get, the numbers uh, go down. And uh, still, um, yeah, we'll have a chart tomorrow by Lemus that remains the top five lowest in the state. Right? We'll have a chart for you. North Brookfield, and if you do per hundred thousand, again, we still um, sort of tally at the bottom. So if you need to be tested. Um, you can still go to the hospital at Health Alliance, but uh, you should have symptoms. And the CDC has added symptoms. You should check to see what those symptoms are. But as I remember, it's things like a sore throat and those, those chills where you can't put enough covers on you. Your body is, is shaking. Um, you know, all of those things have been added to the list. So check that out. Also, if Reliant, again, they will, um, they, they will also uh, take you in. But you need to call them first. And uh, it's for customers only for Reliant. And they will uh, sort of ask you a bunch of questions. They'll have a clinician or, or a physician pra uh, practitioner uh, or a doctor's assistant call you and um, sort of qualify you for that. Um, we did do something uh, today, and that's uh, we're, so we're beginning to get calls from leagues that want to have. Um, start practicing or get in to clean up the fields. Most of them um, lease the property from the city. And so to make it fair, what we said is that um, we're not going to allow people to use our fields. And, um, and, and so what happened is um, people will show up to clean the fields and they'll bring their kids and then the kids will stop playing and then neighbors see the kids playing and then they call us and the police saying there are kids playing in the fields, and then other leagues hear about it and say, hey, you told us nobody could use the fields. We could go there and help uh, and, and clean and get them prepared as long as you keep your distance. And so to make it fair, what we've said is uh, it's okay to go there because uh, it's only a few people and to, to work on the fields, but uh, nobody to use the fields, even if it's just uh, the kids of people that are there. And I hope you understand that because the bulk of our day right now is phone calls uh, from people saying they see somebody going in the back door of a hairstylist. They see a, uh, somebody going into a business that's supposed to be closed. And the bulk of our day is that. And most of the times, it's somebody going in to get the mail. It's somebody going in to get something uh, or products that for themselves. And we send people down to check it out. And 99.9% .9 of the time, it checks itself up. But it is the number one sort of call right now is uh, from those who are concerned, who are calling to say that a business that's supposed to be closed is somebody sneaking in the back door or the front door. Or they saw them doing something that doesn't look right. And obviously, we want you to let, it, we want you to let us know but a, a bulk of that. So we don't want to add to the problem to the police and the health department and all of our departments by having people using our fields, even if it is just the kids who go there. So I hope everybody understands this is just one way of doing it so it's fair. And as soon as we can let, uh, we get some guidance, uh, we will uh, let you know. And also, we've been asked about summer camps. Parents anticipate going back to work at some point. And uh, in June and July and August is when we have our summer camps. So 
Uh, again, looking at these numbers today, it was, you know, we ready to open camps up on the 18th of May? No. Uh, are we ready to open camps up uh, as we always have in June? Probably not just yet. Uh, we'll, we'll sit tight on that. And, uh, but we are looking at, um, can we have smaller venues? Can we have uh, more uh, offerings and more selections, but smaller groups? Is that a potential? Is that possibility for us? Uh, so we need to let people know soon because we, have a, we hire 100 uh, young adults to help us run our summer youth program. And uh, so we're going to have to let people know. Again, we're waiting for some guidance from the state. We don't want to say, yeah, starting July 4th, we can run these programs and then have the state say that, uh, uh, that we can't. Uh, transfer station is closed on Saturdays. Lummis Emergency Management has been delivering 300 meals per day, 1,100 for the weekend, including coordinating with Ginny's. So a lot going on there. <clears throat> Taxes are due on Friday, which is the 1st of May. I'm still trying to figure out where April went. But anyway, June, I mean, May 1st, bills are due June 1st. If you can pay, please do so that we have our cash flow. And um, any other bills that you got after March 10th, um, you need to pay by the end of June. And we will not charge you any penalties or fees or anything like that. And how do you pay? Well, you can go to lamista-ma.gov and play, pay online, which you know, lots of people do. You can also put it in the mailbox, or you can go up to the top stairs at City Hall, and there's a mailbox there, and you can leave it there. Uh, I was planning on using the Creative Choices Summer Camp. Sit tight on those. I'm not saying we're completely going to eliminate them. They may look a little bit different than they do now, but... Um, yeah, so only uh, one more day to burn, and tomorrow is supposed to rain, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that, and the date has not been extended. So um, we'll have to wait and see. On Comcast Essentials program, uh, the deadline was tomorrow, but guess what? They've extended it to June 30th, and the Comcast Essentials program, uh, for those who qualify, you get two months free internet, and then it's $9.95 a month with tax, and if you are eligible household is based on income, those eligible for national school lunch program, housing assistance, Medicaid, SNAP, SSI, and other general eligibilities. Um, so um, call this number, 1-855-846-8376. And I understand it's, it's really easy, really, really easy. And uh, please... Please consider requiring face coverings in grocery stores like Salem and Somerville. It will help protect us all. Well, we are about to get a pretty significant, uh, once we get through the legal process, we are about to get a significant uh, number uh, of masks that we can share to the uh, public, as well as those that work in uh, grocery stores, et cetera. And uh, yes, so that will be the case. It's, remember, this has been a supply problem and if, um, if, if early on, if some of these uh, supermarkets had, were required to have masks um, early on, they would have had to close because they just wouldn't be able to, to get them. So now the, the supply is coming in and through a generous, I, I got to say, I have the best friends in the world and um, just when you need them, they're there. And with a generous donation of one of those friends, um, we're going to get uh, six, seven, eight thousand or more. Uh, masks. These are triple layered. These aren't the 95s, but these are ones that businesses can share with their customers, um, that we can share with you, and we can share with uh, supermarkets. So whatever it is, uh, as soon as we uh, get this document, we, we got a document today, a legal document, sort of a, a disclosure um, liability document. We uh, cleaned that up, sent it back. Now imagine that somebody spends close to a couple hundred thousand dollars to buy a mask, but you've got to cover yourself. So we had to have that sort of written up, sent it back. Hopefully we'll hear tonight, we'll be, well, tomorrow maybe, maybe, I said maybe, we'll be able to start. So soon we'll be able to circulate those masks. And thank you for the pink flamingo mask, right? So yes, we are considering, um, you know, we are. We're not just considering saying, you know, we're going to close supermarkets or throw you out, but we're going to, Get these in the hands of uh, everybody who needs one. So Comcast Essentials Program, 1-855-846-8376. And we continue. People have been so generous, so gracious um, to donate their 
um, their, their electronic devices. And we have students still who do not have electronic devices and they are not connected to the internet, which is why we bring you this Comcast Essentials program. And we are trying to get uh, these, and every day more and more kids get these electronic devices in their hands. And those that are making donations have insisted that those students who otherwise would never get a chance to have one of these electronic devices, to be able to learn, to explore, to follow their passions and interests, um, would, um, would get these and they want them to have them and they want them to keep them. And today the internet is the highway to the world of knowledge and obviously there are things that, you know, there's always a counter side to that, but let's face it, I mean, today, um, I don't know if I shared it or not, but I meant to. It was the, the Cincinnati Zoo or whatever it was. I get, I get that. I get the Washington Observatory. You can learn so much from these. And I, I've gotten such great feedback about sharing these because parents have said, you know what? You share these with us. And when they come on, we call the kids. They sit there. They look agitated for about four seconds. And then we can't peel them away. So uh, some fun things to have there. So anyway, thank you to all those donors. We will make sure we thank every single one of them. Um, don't forget, in case there's not a slide, I'll wait. May 7th. May 7th is our day. It is our day to thank those in public safety, emergency medical services, nurses, doctors, uh, those uh, healthcare workers, whatever capacity, um, our chance to thank those essential workers, right? Those that work in the uh, letter carriers in the post office, those that work in grocery stores and gas stations, and all of those essential workers. This is our chance, May 7th. Think about how you want to get involved. And I know before I start getting inundated with, you know, how are we going to do this? Well, we will do it, and we'll do it, and we'll do it safely. And we'll make sure that everybody is safe, and we'll do it in a dignified way. And so think about how you would like uh, to become involved. It, the date is May 7th. It is also National Prayer Day. And we will allow small groups, uh, nine or under, uh, to gather as long as they are staying uh, six to ten to eight feet away or more and so there is a lot that will be going on that day and uh, but it is uh, something you want to put in your little phone right now it is May 7th if you want to share that that is fine but um, you know we, we could probably pull off anything if people used proper uh, you know CDC guidelines if we used common sense right if we did all that and cooperated, then there's nothing we can't do, which is why the beaches have been closed, because um, everybody, one warm day, everybody gets there and thinks that you know, it's my idea to be here, why doesn't everybody go away? So all of those things interfere with the fact that we can't get things open because, you know, there are few that sort of ruin it, but it is, uh, we're gonna pull it off and we'll pull it off safely. And it will be May 7th. And so uh, think of how you wanna make up some posters or, I don't know what you want to do, but um, that's the date, right? So be thinking about it, right? Something to, to have a family discussion about, right? Maybe you want to paint your house and put remarks on there, like uh, thank you to all public safety and healthcare workers, right? I don't know. Just thinking outside the box. Think into the box. There's the uh, grocery store lines. Some days they have them, but it's based on the square footage, 40% of the maximum per permitted occupancy. So I assume if you go to big box retailers or grocery shopping on those days when everybody else is going, uh, you'll be standing in line. But uh, you'll have to keep your distance there as well. Stimulus checks. I'm happy to report uh, this morning people were sharing with me that they were... Um, getting their checks, and those were people that did not have it done electronically, so uh, their checks were mailed out, and they were getting them, so that's a pretty exciting time. And uh, for those who are um, part of waiting for those uh, checks from the stimulus for businesses, I would say um, stay in touch with the Chamber of Commerce, SBA, and also go to our website at lemonster-ma.gov, and uh, they will uh, instruct you as to the best way, but even your bank, a number of banks have been really helpful in terms of helping people, or accountants, or who does your taxes. Uh, the people that do your taxes, tax preparers, are also helpful. I see no questions, just very few questions today. I'm trying to look here real quick. I was planning on using uh, Creative Choices, stand by. 
I know we plan on uh, an attempt of uh, having graduation done in uh, a, a more of a scale down uh, over the years since Dr. Rapper was superintendent of schools. We changed it from Friday night till Saturday morning. And it was a little bit of a Donnybrook on Friday nights. And it was a different atmosphere. And when we changed it to, uh, uh, Dr. Rapper changed it to uh, Saturday mornings. It was like night and day, no pun intended, but it really was night and day. Uh, it became a, a very dignified event. People dressed up, um, very respectful, of, uh, it, just so much. It was such a dignified event for our students. And uh, so we've been doing that every year, and uh, the weather's cooperated. It gets a little hot and windy sometimes, but weather has cooperated. One year we had it at the DCU Center because we had to close the field to redo um, Doyle Field. But in the meantime, uh, so it will not be an extravaganza as such, but uh, working to uh, pull it off, and it will require all city departments to help and the school department to help, but is a possibility, a strong possibility that this, this would work easily. This can work. It's real easy, right? You just got to cooperate. And for those that don't, then, um, you know, we'll, we'll has to have to address that situation so that a few people don't ruin it for everybody, right? And that includes everyone. So, um, yes. Um, let's see. Oh, raking those leaves. This weekend is supposed to catch a nice day somewhere. I guess it's going to rain. We've had our two day nice days to get all pumped up about spring and how beautiful the flowers and buds and everything is. And So, anyway, March 30th. Um, May 30th is the, the last day, so get those leaves raked up, get them uh, set aside on the curb for trash day, take a picture and send them to dmazzarella at lemonster-ma.gov. First responder meals, uh, let's go to that, uh, yeah, over at the register, I'm sorry, over at McDonald's on 302 North Main Street. Uh, just if you're a first responder, then uh, just yell into the little microphone, the thank you meal, and you will get a free meal. What do you think of that? Part participating stores that are still open but operating either delivery or uh, online, and so take note of that. Remember all of these. There's that May 4th date, right? I kept telling you, don't count on that May 4th date for everything to open. I really tried to underplay that, downplay that, because uh, it just wasn't in the cards here, and uh, it's been extended to the 18th, and I wouldn't expect any huge miracles on the 18th. I would expect baby steps, right? Baby, baby, baby steps. Okay, it's time for Dr. Mazzarella's boot camp, and it's really easy, right? Everybody passes. We all know this information, but I'm repeating it, right? Just in case somebody stops you and gives you the test on the streets. Uh, assume you have the virus, assume everyone you know and con comes in contact with has the virus. Assume every surface that you come in contact with is somehow or another compromised. Wash your hands. This virus despises soap and water. If you don't have soap and water at your access, then um, make sure that you use some hand sanitizer. And we have two barrels of it. We just need bottles to put it in. If anybody knows any place that we can get these little bottles or jars, we can start pumping them into to those small areas. A big thank you to all of those that have contributed. This list goes on and on. It will be much bigger. We will have a day when we'll be able to actually thank all of those who have donated. And we're keeping a list, and it's long, and it's a lot longer than this right here. Senior shopping hours, uh, they're changing, they're expanded, so the best thing to do is call or check their website. Restaurant takeout delivery. Um, you could, this is like Disney for takeout. Everyone is just, I don't know that we'll ever eat at home again. Everyone is so excited about this. Talking about it, it's, uh, it, it's some great deals out there, and um, the, the businesses and restaurants couldn't be any more uh, thankful. And remember, some of these businesses and restaurants can uh, sell you with your food order, can sell alcohol, and it's done from noontime till midnight. I hope you had a chance to go out today. Um, I thought people run the marathon, the amount of people that I saw are out there running today and walking. And that uh, was a nice day. And uh, tomorrow, I guess, or tonight and tomorrow and Friday and maybe even Saturday, some rain. And so, but uh, on Sunday, it's supposed to be nice. We're going to hit some 60s. And so take part in our 26 miles of hiking trails, all of our parks. Stay off the equipment. Do not go on our fields. 
right? And do a pickup game because we'll ask you to leave in a very nice way, right? In a very nice way. For your own good and everybody else's. And um, go to lemmister-ma.gov and visit the um, recreation department <coughs> site and you will find uh, all the trails. They have names, they have marked. You might even want to join the Lemmister Trail Stewards, all volunteers who play an intricate part of our trail system, who have been our, our partners along the way and really are big and helpful. And you might want to join their group uh, because they do wonderful things and are really, as I said, a big help in our partners uh, and, and you know, we bought all this land, and then we're like, okay, now what do we do with it? And uh, to try to run trails through some of these, we just can't do it on our own. The trail stewards have been great, and you can help them. Hey, don't forget our friends over there, Lummis their own, all volunteer run, WLPZ 95.1, and they're streaming at WLPZ.org. Not only do you get the rebroadcast of this, but you get all kinds of really cool music, things you haven't heard in a long time, things you thought you would never hear again. Uh, we'll close out with the last, uh, with the, the um, numbers for today. We are at 90, um, we're at 90 active testing positive, more and more testing being done. We expect those numbers to go up. What we're hoping is that the hospitalization rate drops. It's at a 7%, hasn't really gone up in a week, uh, but we're hoping to get that number down. And what my, what I'm believing now is, and we're waiting to verify those numbers, that we're beginning to test people who have either uh, few symptoms or none at all, which is more dangerous because they're out in the community and probably not knowing that they have, uh, uh, that they have testing positive, and that is probably how this is getting shared at this point, but that's just my own sort of two cents. I want to thank you for watching. You've been great. The numbers are down because you've been cooperating. The numbers are down because people are sharing the information. And uh, we'll, that's the reason why every city and town in Massachusetts, population even close to ours, up or down, and we're at the bottom, at the very bottom of that list. And there's a reason for that, and that's because people are cooperating, using common sense, and following the CDC guidelines. Be safe, be kind, be well. We'll see you tomorrow morning at uh, 9 o'clock. Take care.